here's the deal. Here's the do dealio. We're replacing this, the galvanometer, which is basically just the needle housing sort of deal. So if you've ever like looked through a K1000 or an FE or an AE1 or Spotmatic or SRT or any of those where there's a needle for the meter, this is basically what the housing for it looks like to some degree. They're all kind of a little different in their own ways, but this is a K1000 one. And you can tell because here's the one that I pulled out of there originally. And as you can tell, the needle is pretty low as opposed to this one, which is sitting flat. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. This is what you want them to look like when there's no power, they should just be sitting neutrally in the middle. And then when there is power and when there is input from any of these things, then that's going to adjust the uh, position of the needle itself. So the challenge though, is that in about, let's see, about 20 minutes, my laundry is going to be done, and I'm going to have to run down and change that over. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, yeah, so I've made a few of these videos now, and I don't, I honestly don't think I've edited did any of them, unfortunately. Any of the K1000 light meter problem videos. I think I've talked about them briefly, and I think really all I've gone over is what to do if there's no power to the board. I believe I've covered that, but for the rest of this, and I, I have talked about replacing this before, like taking it out and stuff. So this will be a little bit more of a comprehensive video, I think, and give me a little bit more of an opportunity to talk about the fundamentals of this metering system, because I do feel like it's fairly easy to understand, at least so much as I understand it, which could be wrong. So take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Uh, I do not have a degree in electronics. Okay. I have an art degree. I feel like I need to continually pronounce that. So the tricky thing with this, as I'm sure you could probably understand, getting it to sit in there, hold this, and then screw this in. What I do know is based off of what I read in the manual and my uh, like three years of experience. So it's not like I'm just completely postulating here, but I do think I've got a pretty good rendering as to what is going on. But still, um, I encourage you to go find the truth if you don't trust me, I guess. I'm not trying to dissuade you from doing this yourself, but I also would not recommend these extensive repairs unless you do feel confident in your abilities, because it's kind of a lot, to be honest. It's a lot to, a lot to do. So I just don't want anyone biting off more than they can chew and then ending up with uh, like a box full of cameras that'll probably never work again, like some people have. So what I'm doing here is just kind of cleaning off this bumper. And as you can tell, it was, it's been eroded for years, so it's not even been performing its base function. And really all it will do at this point is get in to where it shouldn't and cause, cause the focus screen to look kind of goopy. So trying to prevent that from happening by cleaning off as much as I can. That's just kind of what I like to do when I'm here. Makes it a little bit easier. And that looks sufficiently clean for the time being. So, cool, that is set there. Now next up, what we're gonna need to do is There's so much to do. So what happened was, and I don't know if I recorded this part, if I just kind of did it and then didn't record 
it because that happens. But I know I didn't record any voiceover for it, and I probably won't because again, I keep thinking like, oh, I'll just I'll record a little bit and then I'll do voiceover later, and then I just never do. Detached the CDS cells first, and the CDS cells are sitting back here on this housing. And it takes these two kind of weird looking screws that are pretty long. They just kind of go in here. And that also holds the viewfinder glass in place right behind the prism. And the viewfinder glass kind of curves out a little bit. That end goes towards the prism, so that sits like that. There are the three cells. There's this one, that one, and then this one that's sitting here. Also, while we're here, just to save a bit of trouble moving forward, we're gonna reattach this, because it's kind of a, it's not necessarily a challenge to do when you put everything back together, but it's just one of those things that it's easier to do in this position. So we're gonna take advantage of that. Cool. And then for the fun parts, so I have here another K1000, and this one I'm gonna use for reference, just because it is challenging to remember where all of these things go all the time. Oh, awesome, I'm glad that I did that. I've disconnected some of the, some of the parts on that board as well, so I'll probably end up just having to pull up the manual regardless. How much time? Oh, 10 minutes, fantastic. Well, I'm glad that we have wasted most of the time available in the dicking around process of getting this kind of put back together. Now I guess we could probably begin working. So red goes right up top there. I think that is the correct red. This red goes right here, I do remember that. absolutely free ball in it. Um, these all go over there. This light blue, I believe, sits right there. I guess we will find out. So yeah, anyway, the, the board itself and the base functions of Dark blue. Where's the dark blue? Did I dis- Oh no. I totally did, didn't I? I think I disconnected it and then... Oh, you dumb son of a biscuit. Okay, there's a dark blue wire that needs to go from the board uh, to the CDS cells. Can't find it. That's okay. We will worry about that later. For now, I'm gonna make sure that this sits somewhat okay. I always like to kind of slide it in like this because of how that's sitting, you don't wanna kind of goof it up. Make sure that you're not clamping down on these wires from the top here. This uh, silver wire here goes right there. And this is, uh, I believe this is the hot shoe contact wire. It runs down the front of the camera to the contacts for the um, flash sync port right there, which uh, those contacts run underneath the camera to here, where if you set it at 60, it charges. I was asked the other day, I received an email, I should say, where it was, um, a gentleman was asking what battery he needed for the Minolta SRT for the flash to work. And I think I replied. It might have been a YouTube comment, but anyway, no battery is required for a flash to work. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, unless of course you have like a electrical camera that needs a battery for 
operation, but I mean, if you're using a K1000, the flash will work without a battery <clears throat> because it's mechanical and it's the best. Six minutes, okay. I wanna get this all connected, the galvanometer connected, and then I will be probably right up to about the time limit with that. Let's see, where does this one go? Okay, so this goes, gotcha, gotcha now, son. Well, this blue wire to the galvanometer goes to this contact there, which I now realize you can't even see, but I will do a full run through of all of this uh, when I'm done. And that will be also good for me to have just on hand because more often than not I end up forgetting and then I have to do things like take apart an entire camera for reference and or pull up the manual which again I have a lot of experience with this camera and I still sometimes cannot remember how it works because I just don't actively think about it as much as I probably should awesome that's good for this moment in time and then yellow fella where are you going oh that's a really bad burning smell awesome okay and then this yellow one from the galvanometer goes right there and then we have the black power wire. So, again, I think I've talked about this before, but I always think it bears repeating, and also I don't think that I've done a video on it yet. So it may be beneficial to cover it once more. Now again, this is not good yet because I'm still missing that blue wire there, but I do think we are. Uh, yeah, we got three minutes left. All right, that should be enough time to <clears throat> quickly go over this. So we're gonna do everyone's favorite thing, which is lesson time. And then I'm gonna go switch my laundry over and then we'll get back to the repair. But I do want to talk about this briefly because I feel like it's important. And again, I don't know if I've covered it yet. So how all of this works. Also, I would like to point out that I have this like little tool organizing system over here. And I've been doing quite a good job of keeping everything pretty organized. Desk, still a bit of a mess, but you know, that's say la vie or whatever. So is life. Why is this out of focus is my question. What are we focusing on? That was very weird. It was like just blurry to be blurry. Okay, so here we go. Here's my rough estimation of how things work. I could be incorrect, so, and I don't know how to really draw circuits. This is gonna be very rudimentary, but you have your battery, okay? That's in the bottom. Power wire runs up to the top of the board here. Now, this board basically controls and kind of computes all of the different inputs, which would be from the front, which is the aperture here, and that is this system here. Behind this, is a contact plate with a brush. And so as soon as this moves, that gives different resistance charges through here, that board feeds into here, okay? So that goes into there. And then you have your speed resistor, which sits over here, and that is this bit here. This is of course your uh, shutter speed and your ASA. And both of those inputs are registered down here by the contact plate under there. So those are these two wires 
feed into the board there. And then of course you have the all important CDS cell deal. And this basically inputs the light resistance and feeds it into there. Move this over there for reference. Light resistor is registered light and that offers resistance and then whatever other inputs, so your apertures and the shutter speed and ASA are coming from this way. So this is light and this is others, which is what we just talked about. And then power comes in to the galvanometer here and these things kind of counteract each other and push this. Oh. and kind of move this needle forward and backwards. So when all of these are coming in, that's going to move it down. When light is coming in, that's going to push it up, basically. And the, 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 this is really, really rudimentary. So this is not the best explanation of it, but this is just what I can deliver to you. So I hope it helps you visualize it a little bit, but there's a lot more nuance to it. This is just kind of more of a general, you know, light metering for dummies kind of thing. Not to say that you're dumb, you're smart, you clicked on this video, but still, it's for beginners, I would say. 101, oh, there's a spider in my room, that's fun. So if the needle's sitting in the middle, regardless of what you do with the inputs, if it's just sitting in the middle, that means typically the power is disconnected from the board, i.e. The battery is disconnected, there is no battery, or something is wrong with the board. If the needle's sitting down to the bottom, typically that is the CDS cells, they're not registering light properly, so those could be fried and or, in this instance, the galvanometer is bad. As you can see, there's no inputs and it's still kind of sitting down. And then if the needle is sitting up, that means that one of these other contacts are bad. Most typically, it's the uh, shutter speed or the, uh, the speed resistor here, those go bad pretty easily and then you just need to be taken apart and cleaned most of the time or the contacts on the board are bad. There's also a resistor that sits right about here on the board, right there. Uh, that definitely goes bad quite often. I've had to replace a few boards because of that. And this is a very, very, very boiled down uh, explanation of how kind of things work but I do hope it helps to some regard. I'm gonna go switch over my laundry though, and then we will get back to putting this together. Should just be a hoot and a half. So I'll catch you in a moment.